All right, so uh, I'm Hemant. Uh, I, I work with uh, Tamarind Tree. Uh, yesterday, Michelle and Prasanna. now. Michelle presented yesterday, Prasanna is here. Uh, this is in continuation of what Michelle had to say. And of course, I'm taking off on what Martin yesterday said in his uh, uh, keynote address, linking or locating Moodle uh, in the development, uh, sustainable development goals of UN. And uh, essentially, it's, it's looking at you know, uh, equal opportunities. Now, the situation that we are looking at is very different when uh, we look at India and education systems. Uh, education is not only about universities that uh, you know we see around. Not only about uh, uh, big institutions and uh, you know uh, deployment of large LMS. And there's this real reality beyond all that, and that's what I'm trying to bring in into our consciousness. And of course, what uh, Michelle yesterday said about uh, questioning or Sometimes we forget that why are we all here? And that's what uh, I'm just very briefly going to talk about, uh, that what we are engaged in. So, uh, well, I don't really need to talk about all this because all of you are aware that uh, the state of public education in India, uh, and not only India, many parts of the world is exactly the same, as pathetic as it can get. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have perennial shortage of teachers. Teachers are uninspiring. Uh, and that's the kind of education all of us have probably gone through, you know. I mean, we remember our childhood and what kind of education we had. And uh, now we see that there's no difference, and that's the reality. I mean, this is also a reality in many, many public schools all over India the enrollment is going down because you know the, the education is either not relevant, it's not happening, or it's of no use. And it's also a good news that the government knows about it, that they are losing out, they are in a big trouble. And that's the reason they think that you know, things are gonna change once they have e-learning and digitization and I mean, in many places we go, we see uh, Moodle being a like buzzword, you know? I mean, everybody talks about LMS, everybody talking about uh, uh, e-learning, and you know, uh, the way it is being interpreted or the way be it is being implemented is really the question. So you will see images like this in many government-owned uh, schools, public schools. Now look at this image, what do you see? You know, somebody must have donated a 386 PC with 512 MB RAM to a school, and that's the center of the story. And children are all peripheral. You know? And that's, really, that's the reality where we talk about uh, e-learning and digitization in Indian schools or government-owned schools. These are some of the other images that we see. Uh, there's a huge amount of money being pumped in in what we know as e-learning, and uh, uh, some standalone PCs are being donated uh, or given to schools uh, all across. And these are the kind of scenarios we observe. Uh, well, I mean, I've not seen this kind of monitor for many years. When I visited one of the schools, I saw this, and I was quite surprised that this monitor still exists, you know. So how is it understood? What is e-learning? So basically, government thinks that you know, once you scan all the textbooks, uh, you have achieved. You know, you have done most of the e-learning. Then you can distribute textbooks on uh, website, and you know, you have arrived. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is precisely what uh, they understand as e-learning, and that is where. Uh, the problem is, and that's why we are looking at the intervention. Now, what if that all those species that are lying in different schools, gathering dust, not being used properly, can actually be used to access 
a well-defined, well-designed LMS, and that's what I want uh, us to consider here. Given the fact that most of the schools are uh, not connected, there's no last mile connectivity, uh, there is, in most of these places, internet is not really available, and yet we have to do something about it. And that's where the intervention is. Uh, yeah, as I said, there's a poor IT infrastructure, there's ir irregular power supply, uh, all those problems that we are all aware of. And that's where I came across this uh, project. Uh, you know, uh, a person called Nicholas from Switzerland has made this, uh, you know, done this kind of a combination where uh, a Raspberry Pi is turned into a kind of a small server, Moodle server, which is offline. Yeah, and uh, it, it also, because now Raspberry Pi 3 has a Wi-Fi chipset as well, so that turns into a kind of a uh, hotspot, which is also holding a Moodle server, a uh, very small uh, form factor, very small cost, and decentralization is now becomes the key word. That what if, rather than talking about large Moodle server, and when Bombay University talks about one lakh student being served by just five or six of them, it's scary, you know, it's a really scary situation. Rather than that, why not we have decentralized Moodle deployment like this and uh, consider a kind of, you know, uh, multiplicity of servers rather than one server serving millions of people. So uh, this is the project that we are looking at. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a low-cost solution, power efficient, decentralized, and extremely friendly. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, uh, we have been uh, working with it for the last 15, 20 days, trying to deploy in the schools around us, uh, not in our own school because we have our own server and you know everything is working fine. But just a school in the neighborhood, uh, like not even a half a kilometer away from us, uh, has extremely difficult situation. And probably you know all that I can do for them is to provide something like this. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is just the beginning of the project. A uh, lot of work is required. Uh, in terms of technology, uh, most of the work, most of the stuff is in place. I mean, uh, everything is working fine uh, uh, in the sense that, you know, it, it doesn't have too much of capacity. Uh, it's just one MB of RAM in that uh, board and, uh, you know, but still you can have 15, 20, 25 connections, concurrent uh, uh, Moodle users uh, can be linked to, linked to uh, a small board. Uh, but the main problem, which I'm like, I don't know how to go about it, I'm pro probably totally useless about it, is the advocacy. How do you convince the government that you can do something like this? And it requires huge amount of advocacy effort which we are not very good at, and I'm looking at this audience that if anybody who can do something like talk to the government, convince them, then I think it's going to help us, uh, I mean, help a lot of people because these are the kind of solutions that we should look at. Decentralization is what I am emphasizing on. Uh, yeah, and content generation is always an issue. Uh, we need to contextualize it when you talk about decentralization, it cannot be, uh, you know, content for all, but it's customized content for all. So every uh, small deployment of Moodle uh, in small school need to have customized content so that, I mean, it effectively means that most of us or a lot of us need to be also generating content uh, in our localized context. So, yeah, I mean, these are the kind of issues that we are talking about. Uh, well, I have a lot to say, but uh, because of the time, uh, probably I'm the most uh, dedicated Moodlers because I keep my server in my pocket. So anybody wants to play around with it can join on the table. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, I'll ask the next speaker to come up and you can still stay here and ask, answer some questions if there's any. Uh, the next one is... Um, 
Can online learning transform cancer training in India? Hopefully a question and an answer. Um, thank you, Hamad. That was...